Okay. So we start. Huh? So this one. So we start with uh, the first chapter in Form 5, uh, which is uh, Force and Motion 2. Force and Motion 2. Okay. So based on the diagram, based on this diagram, it shows an aeroplane flying horizontally with a constant velocity. P and Q are two forces which maintain the aeroplane at constant altitude. So as always, when you want to answer the question, you have to underline or you have to highlight the important points to help you answer the questions. Okay, so in this um, question, the keyword is flying horizontally with a constant velocity. And also, P and Q are two forces which maintain the aeroplane at constant altitude. Okay, constant velocity, uh, flying horizontally with constant velocity and maintain the aeroplane at constant altitude. Okay, now, question A, what is the meaning of forces in equilibrium? Can anyone tell me what is the meaning of forces in equilibrium? Because in paper two, the first question that they will ask is always about the definition of the concept that you are going to uh, be tested in the question. So forces in equilibrium. What is the meaning of forces in equilibrium? You can refer back to your textbook or your notes on the definition. Anyone can tell me what is the definition of forces in equilibrium? Any answer? What's the answer? When the forces acting on an object produce a zero resultant force. Okay, Nam Vijay. Bole. Any other answer that can be accepted? Yes, it will produce a, result, a zero resultant force. Another one is. Uh, the object remain remains at rest or moving with a constant velocity in a straight line okay so that is another um, definition um, for forces in equilibrium. Okay, apart from uh, the forces acting on an object produce a zero resultant force. Okay, that one can also be accepted. Now moving on to the second uh, question, name the forces P and Q. So what is the name of the forces P and Q? What is P and what is Q? The easiest one will be um, identifying what is Q. Yes, Q is weight. Q 
is weight. Okay. And then what about P? What is P? Starts with L. Lift, yeah. P is lift. Lifting, lifting force, okay? Lifting force, right? Lifting force. P is lifting force and Q is weight. Berat. Next question. Um, write the equation to show the relationship between P and Q. So how do you write the equation? For forces in equilibrium, how do you write the equation uh, to show the relationship between P and Q? If both are equal, then it should be written as How do you write it? P plus Q equals to zero. Um, actually, it should be written like this. P equals to Q. Because both of the forces are equal. So you can write the relationship P equals to Q. Okay? P equals to Q. Dapat? Uh, but in terms of vector, if you want to uh, take into consideration the direction, then what Vijay just wrote can also be accepted because yes, it is true and correct that if you add both of the forces together, if you add P and Q, it will produce a zero resultant force. So that one can also be accepted. Okay, P plus Q equals to zero. And another one that can be accepted if you take into consideration the direction because uh, force is a vector quantity, so the direction can be taken into consideration. So it can be written also as P is equal to negative Q. P equals to negative Q because as you can see here, P is, the direction of P is going upwards. So in the Cartesian um, scale, in the Cartesian punya axis kan, going up, is considered as positive direction and going down is considered as negative direction. So P is positive and Q direct, the direction of Q is negative. So if you add it all, P equals to negative Q. Okay, uh, Both have the same magnitude, but a different in terms of the direction. So you can also write it P plus Q equals to zero. It can be accepted lah. Boleh? Okay. Ah. Tapi untuk lebih senang, uh, the most simplest answer would be this one. This one. And this one also can. But the simplest answer would be ini. Okay. P equals to Q. Okay. All right. So we move on to the second question. Second question here is about an experiment to investigate the relationship between the force acting on the spring and the extension of the spring. So it is between force, force is F, and the extension of spring. So extension, the symbol is X, okay? 
So diagram 2.2 shows the graph of force against length x. So this is the graph. And the question is, based on diagram 2.2, what is the value of x when w equals to 0? What is the value of x when w equals to 0? So let's check. When w equals to 0, what is the value of x? So what is the answer? When w equals to 0, what is the value of x? Ten, and yes, must be other unit there lah. So your final answer it should be written as ten centimeter because the uh, it is referring to this part here, the one that I have highlighted yellow. When w equals to zero, so x is ten centimeter. Okay, ten centimeter. Only one more. Okay, then question B. What does the value of x in two A represent? So what does the value of x in 2a represent? w equals to 0 means that uh, there is no load on the spring. There is no load on the spring. So what does the value of x in 2a represent? Starts with O. Yeah, betul. Original length. Okay, so the value represent the original length. Original length of the spring. Okay, next one. State whether the spring obeys Hooke's law within the range shown. State whether the spring obeys Hooke's law within the range shown. Does it obey the Hooke's law within the range shown? What do you think? The uh, range, no, kenapa, why? The range that we are referring to is, uh, yeah, yang ada tu garis tu lah. So from here, eh, let me use a thicker line. This part here. Mm. Mm. This box. This range. Yeah, if, uh, it, yes, it doesn't start from zero, but um, in this range, Punya range. Does it obey Hooke's law based on this range? How do you know if it obeys Hooke's law? Uh, what is the equation for Hooke's law? Mm. F equals to kx kan? Hooke's law. Hooke's law is F equals to kx. So um, actually dia punya betul. To find k, 
the spring constant f over x f over x okay which is also equals to the gradient of the graph so if you want to find for each part lakan this part for each part this one this part here the value of k is uh, 4 over 4 over 2 4 over 2 ini 12 tolak 10 is 2 kan so 4 over 2 the value of k should be 2 okay so if you we if we move on to the second point here you try and find the value of k is it still the same as 2 8 you divide by 14 minus 10 or 14 minus 2 14 Minus 10 is 8. Sorry, bukan 8. Ah. Not 8. Same thing lah. 4 bahagi 2 is 2. And the same value also applies for the rest of the points. Okay, it will give uh, the value of k equals to 2. So if all the values of k is equals to 2 for all the points, then we can say that it obeys Hooke's law. Okay? It obeys Hooke's law because based on this equation, f equals to kx, it is, uh, we can also write the equation as f is directly proportional to the extension of the spring. Right, so it obeys Hooke's law. So we can say that yang soalan C satu tu, it obeys Hooke's law. It obeys Hooke's law. Okay, give one reason for the answer. One reason for the answer. Why uh, it obeys Hooke's law is because because the graph is a straight line where The force is directly proportional to proportional to the extension. Okay, so that is the reason lah that you can write. Right. Um, question D, determine the extension of the string when the force of 20 Newton is applied. Determine the extension of the string when the force of 20 Newton is applied. So based on the graph, let's check. Force of 20 Newton. Okay, I'll clear this one first. So, can you find the answer? When the force is 20 Newton, what is the extension of the spring? Can you find the answer? This one is only one map. So, 20. No, 10. Yeah, 10. Vijay, you haven't um, kasi subtract from the original length. Okay, so you have to do the... Uh, Uh, 
ini kan dan read the value kenapa tuh oke okay. so you will get this one but that is not the answer so you should subtract from the original length okay subtract from this one so the extension would be 10 centimeter or you can also write your answer in si unit so the extension will be extension Extension is uh, 20 minus 10. So 10 centimeter or 0 0.1 meter. Okay. So this is only one mark. So if you're able to state uh, the final answer with the correct unit, then you can get one mark. Okay. So it two untuk soalan. Uh, involving Hooke's law. Okay, so the next question. Uh, this one is taken from section B and C, which is from the essay question. So question number one. The diagram one below shows a cargo ship is being towed by two towing boats using the same force, 1,200 Newton each. The resultant force from the two boats causes the cargo ship to move forward. So both are using the same force, 1,200 Newton each. Okay. Okay. So first question, because this is essay, so the first question will be asking you about the definition of the concept. What is the meaning of resultant force? What is the meaning of resultant force? Alah, maksudnya sum of sum of two or more forces to produce a single force. Okay, so that's the definition for resultant force. Sum of two or more forces to produce a single force. Okay, next one. Based on diagram one above, sketch the, re the resolution of force, 1,200 Newton for towing boat one to its component. How do we draw the resolution of force 1200 Newton for towing boat one to its component? Any idea on how to draw? Okay, so first we have for resolution of forces, we have the vertical component. The vertical component is referring to Fy. And we also have the horizontal component, O, F, X. Okay, so first we will draw. This is the vertical component. Vertical component, F, F, Y. And we also have. The horizontal component, Fx. Okay, so in the middle, 
would be this one. Okay, the resultant force for towing boat one. So you can also Okay. Then label it as F equals to 1,200 Newton. Right? Because this is only one mark. Uh, yes, this is only one mark for you to sketch. Sketch the resolution of forces. Okay, so it's only one mark. So it, as long as you draw the vertical component, the horizontal component, and the value of F equals to 1,200 Newton, then you should get one mark. Lah. So make sure you show also the direction, the arrow pointing the direction. Okay? Next question. Uh, calculate the horizontal component of force acting on towing boat one. Calculate the horizontal component. Horizontal component, we are referring to Fx. Fx. Jadi, macam mana kita buat? Oh ya, satu lagi. What about the angle? What about the angle? What is the value of the angle? In here. What is the value of this angle here? Is it 40 or 20? Yeah, should be 20 degrees. Okay, dia adalah 20 degrees. Uh, this might trick you lah, but actually it is half. Okay, when you draw the resolution of forces, the value of this angle that I have um, drawn in green, it should be half. So 20 degrees. So can you calculate what is the value of the horizontal component Fx? Kita guna apa? Sine, cos, yeah, 20. And right, 20. What is the value of Fx? Find the value of Fx. Cost 20 times 1,200. Yeah, betul. Correct. So, it should be written as F cos 20 degrees. Kan? Okay. So, F is 1,200. And then you times with value of cost. Uh, 20 is 0 0.9397 okay for the ang for the value of sine cos or tangent of the angle it should be at least four um significant figures so your final answer at least in two significant figures oh, sorry two decimal point Six three Newton. No? Okay, one thousand one hundred twenty seven point six three Newton. Okay.
tepat ah. So, uh, that one is two marks. One mark for the substitution of value. And another one mark will be the final answer with the correct unit. Right? Sudah? Okay, kalau sudah. And then, uh, question number three, calculate the resultant force acting on the cargo ship. Resultant force acting on the cargo ship. Tadi dia patut minta resolution of force. Now, mau minta resultant force. Two marks also. Calculate the resultant force acting on the cargo ship. Jadi berapa? The resultant force that we are referring to is actually siapa padam dulu lah. Referring to ini lah. This is the resultant force that we are trying to find. Hmm. So, how should we find the answer for that one? Resultant force. Any idea? Resultant force. Is 2F. Cos 20 degree. Kita guna ni formula. 2F. Cos 20 degrees. Kenapa dua kali F? Because we are using. Uh, two uh, force of the same value. Okay, we are using the same force which have the same value. So you can kasih uh, wakilkannya sebagai 2F. And the angle is still 20 degrees. We do not use 40 degrees. We use 20 degrees. So your answer will be two times the values that we got just now. One one two seven point six three. So final answer is two thousand two hundred fifty five point two six Newton. Okay. Okay. Can we continue to the next question? Or is there anything you want to ask about this one? Okay. Bye. Okay, so we continue to the next question. Okay, question number two. Question number two. A pogo stick. A pogo stick is a device where jumping off the ground in a standing position through the aid of an elastic spring. Often used as a toy, exercise equipment, or extreme sport instrument. Uh, diagram two shows David is balancing on pogo stick. David's weight causes the elastic spring in the pogo stick compress. What type, what is the type of energy stored in the compressed 
spring. Jadi apa? Type of energy stored in the compressed spring. Elastic potential energy. Yes. Uh, you cannot simply uh, write the answer as potential energy because potential energy have two types. The first one is gravitational potential energy and the second one is elastic potential energy. Okay, since this um, situation is involving spring, so the type of energy that we are referring to is elastic potential energy. So you have to really specify what is the type of potential energy uh, that the spring has. So, nama, nama yang Ellen tulis tu lah bagi tadi tu. So, elastic potential energy. Okay. Question B. Explain why the spring is elastic, but at certain extent, the spring cannot return to its original length when the force is removed. So this is explaining. So usually four marks lah. So four marks means you have to give four points. Your answer can be in point forms, but make sure your sentences is complete. Now, how do we explain? What is the first point? Okay, the first point would be what is the first point? Um, what are the two forces that the string have? There are there are two force there are two forces between the atoms in the spring. So what is the name of the two forces inside the spring? Can anyone guess what is the name? of the force bukan itu energy this one force when the spring is compressed the atoms inside the spring will tend to apa? In order for it to return to its original size, length, position. So when the spring is compressed, what type of force does the atoms have? Starts with R. Re Paul wow. 
Okay, repulsion force. And the other one, when the spring is stretched. When the spring is stretched, what type of force does the atoms have? When the spring is stretched. If the spring, ah, betul. Attraction force. Now, and attraction force. Okay, one is when the spring is compressed, so it's repulsion force, and the other one is when the springs are stretched, so it will, uh, the atoms inside the spring will tend to trying to attract all the atoms together again for it to be able to return to its original size, length, and shape. Okay, itu baru first point. Now, what is the second point? The second point is. Uh, the one that I have said just now lah, when the when the spring is compressed, the repulsion force between the atom returns the spring to its original state. The returns, okay. Third one, what is the third point? Third point is, when the spring is stretched, the attraction force of the atom returns the spring to its original state. And final one. Spring cannot return. original length if when can the spring cannot return to its original length when the apa when the elastic limit has been exceeded okay so four points lah di sana okay so that is four points Right, any question for this one involving spring? No, no question. Okay, so we move on uh, some more to the next chapter, chapter two, pressure. This one is taken from section A. So these are some of the examples of questions in 
section A for chapter uh, pressure. Okay, so diagram one sh below shows water spurting out from holes P and Q of a tank respectively. State one factor that affect the liquid pressure in the tank. So what are the factors that affect the liquid pressure in the tank? Depth, okay. Selain daripada tu? A density, betul. Okay, because uh, the clue is given actually from uh, this formula. The formula for liquid pressure is P equals to H rho G. H is the depth. This one is the depth. This one is the density. And G, we all know that stands for gravitational acceleration. So you can put the answer here. It's either depth or it could also be the density of liquid. Okay. Do not put the symbol H or the symbol rho as the answer because if you want to put the symbols, then you have to define what is the meaning of the symbol that you use, right? Okay, next question. When the level of the water decreases, what will happen to the distance x? So what should be the answer? When the level of the water decreases, what will happen to the distance x? Level of the water um, represent the depth. So what will happen to the distance x? So there are three possible answers. It's either increase, decrease, or unchanged. So based on the situation, yes, uh, the distance x will decrease. Okay, so you can put the answer decreases. Boleh nampak juga kan? Uh, actually, yang tu dia punya distance. So, distance X represents the pressure. And the depth, the level of water is the depth. So, we can see that it is directly proportional. If the level of water decreases, then the pressure decreases. So, the distance of water spurting will also decrease. Yes, decrease. All right. Question C. Compare the water pressure at P and Q. Compare the water pressure at P and Q. Q is higher than P. Yeah, betul betul. So you can write down your answer. It's either you. You write like this, P is, P is less than Q, or you can also write as Q is greater than P, okay? Q is greater than P, right. Next question, calculate the water pressure at Q. Calculate the water pressure at Q. You are given the density of water as 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. So at Q, uh, what is the depth? What is the depth at Q? Which value should you use? Is it 5, is it 8, or the difference between 5, 8 and 5? Yeah, total five. Five meter. So calculate. Yes, you should use this one. This is the depth that we are using for Q because it is measured from the surface of the water until the point where uh, the hole is. Lah. Point Q is. Okay, so you use the formula just now. 
P equals to H rho G. Okay, substitute into the formula. Then what will be the answer? Forty nine thousand and fifty Pascal. Yeah, correct. Nama five times one thousand. Then we use G nine point eight one. So the answer is okay, correct. All right. Okay, another one, last one for tonight. Question number two. Diagram 2.1 shows the glass filled to the top with water and covered with a piece of cardboard. It is then inverted and lifted. Diagram 2.2 shows the glass filled to the top with water and inverted in a water-filled container. Then it is lifted. Okay. Uh, name the physics concept involved in both situations. So what is the name of the physics concept? Involved in both situation. Yeah, but all atmospheric pressure. Um, yeah, atmospheric pressure. Yes, atmospheric pressure. Okay, next one. Um, observe diagram 2.1 and diagram 2.2. State the similarities between the situations of the classes. Similarities between the situations of the classes. So let's look back at both of the diagrams. So what are the similarities between both of the classes? Both full. Okay. Other than that, uh, in terms of the atmospheric pressure, what can you say about the atmospheric pressure exerted by both of the classes in both of the diagrams? Is the value of the um, atmospheric pressure exerted by both of the glasses in both diagrams the same or is it different? Same, kan? Yeah. It should be the same. So you can write um, both situation. Both situations gave the same. Atmospheric pressure. Okay, so that's the answer for B. Both situations gave the same atmospheric pressure. All right. Uh, question C Explain why both situations happen. Only one mark for that one. Explain why both situation happen. This is because the air that pushes from under the paper is strong enough to overcome the weight of the water 
that pushes the paper down. Okay, so that's the answer. Even though it is only one mark and your answer is long, but yeah, that's the answer lah. But usually, kalau you're explaining ni, dia, usually there are two marks. Okay? So the air that pushes from under the paper is strong enough to overcome the weight of the paper that pushes the paper down. Okay, so that is why uh, you are able to leave the glasses uh, without it being spilled. Right. Uh, question D, last one for tonight. Name two applications that use the concepts of physics stated in 2B. Atmospheric pressure, lah, kan? So, name two applications that use the concept of atmospheric pressure. So, apa? The first one is what? What is the name of the application? Starts with S. Uh, the one that involves um, tank. And then you want to transfer it to another pail here, another bucket here. What is the name? Ah, siphon. Siphon and another one? What else? When the barometer, no, that is an instrument to measure upper atmospheric pressure. Any application? When your toilet is clogged, what do you use? Kalau tandas kamu tersumbat, ya plunger. Betul. You use a plunger. Okay. So, two applications. It's siphon and also a plunger. All right, so I think that's it for tonight. Uh, already one hour. So continue to do the other questions for us to be to uh, for us to discuss next time. Okay, we should be able to finish all these questions in the module uh, before your next trial. Lah. Your next trial will be in October um, twenty something lah, twenty something. Okay. Hopefully, we can finish all the modules, the questions in the module. And apalah, uh, hopefully that you can understand all of the concept. All right. Any question for tonight? No question. Huh? All right. So as I said before, you continue to do your revision. Try to do all this question. Okay. If any problem, then don't be shy to come and ask me. All right. So if you have no more question, then uh, you can go. Okay. Thank you all. And I'll see you again tomorrow for our class. Tomorrow is a new chapter. All right. Thank, thank you. you yes. Thank you.